Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marcin. My family name is Otto. And I represent Konyar, a company producing conductive yarn. So now immediately you know where the name comes from. Konyar producing unique fiber. I thought it would be here too. OK, that's made 100% entirely from carbon nanotubes. Those fibers are conductive as metals, conductive electrically and thermally, and they are lightweight and they have handling of textiles, so they are robust, uh, not uh, breaking like metals. And when we talk about electrical conductivity, we never talk about Siemens per meter. We always talk about mega Siemens per centimeter. We talk about uh, even hundreds of Siemens per meter. If we talk Siemens, then it's something wrong. Uh, team, we have a very small, effective and uh, efficient uh, team. That's very important for us because we are not a very rich company yet. But we estimate the market for carbon nanotube fibers, so 100% carbon nanotube fibers, for at, at 580 to 1.2 billion euro, and we want to capture half of it. The other half can be taken by the other companies. We have support of very large and very small companies, companies who are very ambitious, who want to do something new. And if they use our fibers, immediately they do something new. <coughs> An important thing for us, I'm sorry, I got a, got a cold and it's not easy to remove. And we are growing sales because that is the main way that of our, uh, our, our financing. Now, I, I, I would like to tell you how the company was raised, how it was incorporated, because then you will understand why we work this way or another and what you can expect from us. So after 10 years in marketing, I, I was asked, um, I thought we would have a laser here, but no. I was asked to look uh, uh, for new technologies, and I found that we could make Tejin Aramid, could make a very good match with Rice University, who was also working on uh, uh, um, acid spun uh, fibers, because we have a lot of experience of fibers. Rice had a lot of uh, experience in handling carbon nanotubes. That was a good match. So I raised a lot of money in our company, and we could pay Rice. And we had a very good project with a group of Matteo Pascali. Uh, we had five stages. It was a little bit a roller coaster because every every half year we had a go no go. So it was you know uh, it was tough, <laughs> but we had a lot of, of of fun. Our people were going to rice and and teaching the other guys uh, um, spinning fibers, and uh, we were learning from them how to handle carbon nanotubes. So it was ideal match. And at the last moment, when I uh, assured money for, uh, for uh, a year, I thought we are on, on a good path. But after that year, it appeared that our company changed its strategy and decided to not to develop new fibers of new, from new materials, but to uh, go to solutions. Uh, solutions meaning going downstream. So I lost all the funding which is absolutely not nice, I can tell you, especially when it happens in such a short time. So for one and a half year, uh, the business unit, mother business unit was supporting me, but at one moment they said, no, we stop it. And at that point, I thought we have such a strong pull in the market. There is so much interest, I cannot leave it like that. And I bought all, this, uh, all those activities and uh, set up uh, Konyar BV, BV on uh, January 2016 with the name Konyar Conductive Yarn. We have private investor, we are privately owned, we have proprietary technology, uh, we have personnel and laboratories of Tejin Aramid. We don't have to own all the laboratories and, and people, it's, it's way too expensive, but we have agreement under which we can hire top-notch scientists from Tejin Aramid, and that is actually the main asset of, uh, of Konyar. When I look how our people work, it is really fabulous. It is really fabulous how the team collaborate and everyone from uh, the operator to the top scientist, you know, try to find a way uh, to tackle the technological and scientific problems. Uh, 
And here now I would like to tell you why we couldn't find solution uh, for um, when we were, so when the uh, project was part of the mother company, we couldn't find an investor and it's very easy to understand if you think project is divided and di between different uh, uh, departments in a company, so such investor doesn't know what he's doing. So I thought that transition to a, a, a startup company with partial overlap with mother company will work uh, very well. And it, indeed, the investors are, are more positive than they were used to be. And then at one moment, I hope it will be around to 20 that we'll start having our own assets and our own personnel. But that is not something that we are ambitious to do in 2018, for example. Uh, the characteristics of Konyar is that we don't want to repeat the errors of the past. And the error of the past was very often that people were developing uh, uh, developing uh, science, then developing technology, and then end use, so making the product fit for use for the customer, and then going into applications, which are totally there, there, uh, up there. We do it differently. We do it immediately, all together, which makes people very often disappointed that we don't know things, but the advantage is that we immediately, from the very beginning, find companies who already have a, an application. And I can, have, I can show you here already a cable which, we already, which exists uh, something like uh, two and a half years you can buy for audio, audio cable based on our fibers. And what you see up there uh, at the top are the different, uh, oh, sorry, different um, uh, applications. So we are in audio cables, which you can buy already on, uh, on the market. We are in satellite cables, heat management, uh, smart clothing, but also composites and light power, because people are interested in making lightweight electric motors of our fibers. Here's something about our process. This is very, <coughs> sorry, this is very rough sketch of the process which we have to scale up. Process which we are using, I, 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 before I was born probably, because uh, it started with rayon somewhere in the 1930s, but it's called wet spinning. Uh, you know, we, you, you make a dope from, the, in, this time, in, in that case, from carbon nanochips, put it in the cylinder, you extrude it through a spinneret head, uh, coagulate fiber, wind it on a drum, and then uh, do the offline washing, uh, overwind it on spools, and then you assemble the whole stuff to a much thicker fiber. This is very usual technology. The things which are important are details which you can't see here. That stuff, you know, you can uh, scale up by making a bigger, uh, uh, bigger cylinder, but obviously you have to go to uh, put all those parts together in a one uh, single process. Now, <coughs> now, I would like to tell something about the conductivity of our fibers. The real good conductivity is when you have a metal. Metal means there is a sea of electrons and there are always, so there are always electrons ready for, for conductivity. And that is characteristic when you look here. I cannot show you, but at temp, the first uh, picture between, uh, don't you have some, a pointer somewhere here? No. Okay, the answer is no. So between 100 and 300 degrees, you can see rays of uh, uh, resistivity on the first picture to lower green and red line. And that means that there is a constant number of uh, charge carriers and the mobility decreases because of scattering of charge carriers on, on, uh, uh, on phonons, with an increasing number of phonons with temperature. However, <coughs> At low temperatures, you see the uh, resistivity raising again, and that is a very special thing. So uh, if you look at magnetoresistance transversally to the fiber axis, then you see that we have a neg negative magnetoresistance, and 
those things are very characteristic for, for graphite intercalated compounds. And that work has been run in, uh, in the 80s uh, of the previous century. And I, have, I had a, a, a great pleasure to collaborate with veterans of that work, Jean, uh, Luc Pirot and Jean-Paul Issy, a fabulous uh, Belgium French speaking scientist, who explained the, all those things to me. And they told me, explained to me, why the, here sigma, which is sigma is n well, multiplied by, by charge, uh, charge by mobility. N is constant and only carrier mobility is uh, changing. They explained to me that this is a typical metallic behavior at high temperature, but in low, at low temperatures we have logarithmic dependence of resistivity and negative re magneto resistance, and that is consistent with a two-dimensional quantum charge transport. There is so-called local, uh, weak localization. Why is it important? Why is it tell I am telling you those things? Because here you can see that the electrons are not traveling in the tubes. They are not traveling in the channels of the tubes, what people often say. They are moving at the surface. And I, in yellow, I, go, I gave those surfaces. <coughs> indicated those services so they can move not only forward but also sidewards and that explains why there is a pretty good conductivity across our fiber and that is a very handy thing because otherwise we would we would have trouble with conductivity in uh, uh, fibers consisting of many in yarn consisting of many fibers and another um, conclusion which they uh, pulled was that in our fibers, the order uh, of carbon nanotubes is so good, they form such a good crystals that actually the resistivity is determined by intrinsic resistivity of carbon nanotubes. You can find those things in physical review B92 from 2015. Now something about mechanical properties of our fibers. Many people talk about strengths, but in use, people very often ask, what is the strength at higher elevated temperatures? And here is a comparison of different fibers. You can see polyethylene is blue. Uh, sorry, temperature is horizontal scale. Vertical scale is relative tenacity at 20 degrees. <coughs> polyethylene is blue. You can see at 140 degrees, it melts. Nylon polyester, 260, 65 degrees, melted. Aramid disintegrate at 450 degrees. And uh, conyar fiber retains 55% at 500 degrees. And that makes us very happy because it means that you can use those fibers in high temperature applications. You can, by the way, see that steel is having 60% and uh, 65, and only carbon fiber has better, uh, retains uh, strength better than our uh, carbon nanotube fiber. Now I'm coming to the market and applications. Many of those things I cannot tell you because we have uh, NDA agreements with our customers who pay for our fibers, they buy our fibers to make something new, and obviously, <coughs> those things are very valuable for, for them and those are their ideas so I can be only uh, yeah, very foggy about, about what, they are, what they are doing. But I could, would like to share with you the vision of the mark as we see it. On the horizontal scale you see tenacity, tenacity or strength per, per weight. On the vertical scale you see conductivity and the quadrants you know, are made by one side, uh, copper weight-wise. You know, conductivity of copper is very high, but it's six times heavier than our fiber. So if our fiber has six times lower conductivity, it is weight-wise the same conductivity than copper, okay? 
And I can tell you that now we are, let's be honest, uh, we are in the, in, the, in the first quadrant. We are not far away from the cross, uh, of crossing the, that line, but still we are not there. And so we have niche applications, developments, uh, satellite cables, like those audio cables. But the real big market is there when you are at conductivity above weight-wise copper. And in, on the horizontal scale, you have uh, the tenacity. And you know, some time ago, <coughs> I had an impression that it will be enough to have something like 1,300 millinewton per tax to, have, to get the market. But now I am, I'm more uh, pessimistic about it. Uh, I think that you need to be to match, at least match, aramid fibers and carbon fiber that anyone would consider going to carbon nanotube fiber. So 2,000 millinewton per tax is, is in fact, the, 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 that border of the vertical line. But if you have both, so high conductivity and high tenacity, and there is a very, very good chance that they go together, then you have a gargantual market because you have the, the structural markets and conductivity markets. So uh, now I told you I will show you one, one uh, application. Here is a, uh, an audio cable of company Van den Hull. It's a Dutch company. You can buy that cable. So it is, uh, it is an interlink. It improves sound of your installation. And if your installation is 100,000 euro, then you surely should buy that cable. And I can assure you, you can hear the difference. And if you come to Netherlands, I can make sure that you will hear that difference. We, we also have people interested in making electric motors. I am missing um, the motor now. Yeah, here is it. I don't, I don't have the motor. We have a video on internet and you can find it if you look for electric motor LUT, La Peinranta University of Technology. The motor is that big and the, the video explains everything. This is a mock-up preparing for making this motor, the real motor. 40 watt, watt motor, it's the first motor which has everything what the motor should have. And actually that uh, single sample helped us attract um, attention, interest of pretty large companies who want to make lightweight personal mobility for which not very high uh, power of electric motors is necessary. At this point, and I came to, my, uh, to the end of, uh, of my presentation, I would like to thank you uh, to the team of Konyar, and part of the team is sitting there, and the financial director is sitting somewhere there also, uh, because they are doing a great job, and uh, it's definitely also their... Uh, uh, it's thanks to them that, that we exist and we can make such a fantastic results. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Uh, my name is Minakov Alexey from Oxiao. Could you please name some critical requirements to the raw material for your carbon energy fibers? What are we speaking? <laughs> Uh, critical critical uh, requirements yeah so one is consistency so <coughs> consistency on uh, GD ratio on uh, uh, dispersion of your ca uh, carbon nanotubes uh, we like high GD ratio we like long tubes we don't like uh, a lot of um, uh, impurities, but the 3% is okay for us. We don't like agglomerates and we don't like uh, uh, graphene sheets. To be honest, I have an impression that those are very tough requirements. 
But on the other hand, I know that if you will manage to meet those requirements, then we are very, very close to going into kilogram scale and hundreds of kilogram scale. This, we are only one step apart, uh, as, as I, uh, 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 far from that, from that. So it is worthwhile to do that. Uh, I should also say we are very happy with the progress you made since the first time we got your samples in uh, uh, September 2013. You made a very nice progress. We had batches which worked very well. Thank you. And what's, what's your prediction on uh, Space Elevator? When? When will it be built? Well, as far as, far as I am concerned, tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very optimistic. Uh, one more question. Okay, oh, please. Thank you for your talk. Uh, I'm Yun Yi from China, and uh, I have one question about the properties of the combinatorial fibers. Uh, how about the strength, uh, conductivity, and the flexibility of the, your fiber? <coughs> so, um, that depends on the quality of tubes which we get. So some of the, uh, so I can say that we are between, let's say, one and six Siemens, mega Siemens per centimeter, somewhere around that. And where we actually are depends on the tubes and the batch and uh, how, if we make one, sample or we can reproduce. It's a big difference if you make uh, five meters or you, may, you can make 500 meters. You, 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 know, you know that. And, uh, and, was, and the tenacity, you know, we don't really, uh, at this point, because of the, this uh, quadrant, uh, we don't really pay much attention to tenacity. We want tenacity to be above, let's say, on the textiles level, so let's say 400 millinewton per tex. Does it say anything? Yeah, 400 millinewton per tex, okay. so which is uh, 600 MPa. It's enough for handling. Thank you.